WD's SN750 has been out for a fair while now. Actually going on three years at this point, which feels like an eternity in the world of tech. But considering that PCIe Gen 3 drives are still plenty or more than enough for the average gamer, and that these drives are coming down in price pretty rapidly, the SN750 is looking like possibly the best option on the market, at least right now. So let's take a look at it. Now first off, I should make it clear, I have the one terabyte model here. Uh, the different capacities can vary in speed, uh, especially in write speed, but this one is rated for up to 34, 30 megabytes per second, or about 3.4 gigabytes per second in reads, and about three gigabytes per second in writes, which is actually slightly less than the Samsung 970 EVO Plus, which quotes 3.5 gigabits per second reads and up to 3.3 gigabits per second writes for its one terabyte model. They have the same 600 terabyte written endurance rating and a five year warranty and actually share pretty similar pricing as well. On the recent Black Friday sales, they were listed at a very similar around £85 or so price tag, although the off-sale pricing has the SN750 between 10 and 15 or 15 to £20 cheaper. So on paper then, these look like pretty identical drives. And actually looking at the synthetic benchmark numbers, well, they look pretty similar too. I only had the 250 gig version of the 970 EVO Plus in for testing, which thanks to its smaller capacity means that it doesn't perform quite as well as the larger one terabyte version would. But in general, the two are pretty much tied with, especially in the read performance, which generally stays pretty similar. Uh, they're actually being pretty close, in fact, slightly higher on this 970 Samsung drive. Although of course, slightly stronger write performance on the SN750 instead. Even looking at the ATTO test, you can see the two sets of lines are pretty similar here, only being overshadowed by the PCIe Gen 4 drives, which have literally double the bandwidth. So they're functionally identical then, right? Well, not quite. See, both of these drives use what's called SLC caching. Basically, uh, either having a separate part of the, the, the total drive's capacity uh, as this SLC or single level cell, single bit per cell memory, or having a sort of dynamically created SLC cache where uh, instead of writing to, in both of these drives cases, the three bits that are stored in each cell, you only write to one bit at a time. And that's much faster than trying to fill each bit and then move on to the next one. It's more, you're sort of acting more like a machine gun rather than a, a slow pour. And so what that means is that all of those advertised figures, including the ones that are literally on the boxes, well, those are all quoting writing to that cache, not to the, the, the bare drive sort of behind that cache. And that means that when you run out of that cache space, the performance is significantly different compared to its, its advertised figures. Now, you could probably call that sort of false advertising, although I think that's a topic for another video. What's important to know is the, the sizes and performance that you get when you do drop off that cache and obviously when you will drop off. For the 250 gig model uh, of the 970 EVO Plus that I've had in, the cache is ridiculously small. What that means is that uh, if you take a look at my, my copy test or duplication test, you have a very small amount of sort of full fat performance, which in this case is only around one gigabyte per second as I'm duplicating the files on the drive itself, stressing both reads and writes simultaneously. That uh, immediately drops off down to its sort of throttled level, which for the 250 gig version is only 400 megabytes per second at peak and uh, across the, the average of that test it was more like 300. Whereas comparing to the SN750 uh, which I should make it clear is the one terabyte model not the 250 gig as a direct comparison 
that was sitting pretty happily at about 1.6 or 1.7 gigabytes per second when in its SLC cache, and then when it very gently dropped off of it, I was still getting around 1.3, 1.4 gigabytes per second across the entirety of actually the entire drive's volume, the entire capacity, which is significantly better at least, uh, to make it clear, than that 250 gig model. Now, I'm making it clear that I'm testing with the 250 gig model of the 970 EVO Plus here because the SLC cache size depends on the size of the drive. And for the one terabyte model, the original uh, version of that had 43 gigabytes of SLC cache. And once you dropped off of that cache, you would get around about 1.5 gigabytes per second, at least in theory anyway. Now, that is actually pretty similar to the SN750. In fact, I think the SN750's cache is about 30 gigabytes or so, give or take. Uh, but they actually, or Samsung released an updated, or a sort of quietly updated version of the 970 EVO Plus, which means that the version I think you would buy today, like if you went and bought one uh, right now, that would actually have 115 gigabytes of SLC cache space at the cost of only having 800 megabytes per second uh, of write speeds once you drop off of that cache. Now, I'm not sure how many people are writing, well, actually all that much, even 30 or so gigabytes, let alone 115 uh, to their drive at any one time, and they need the, the maximum performance possible, but it's worth mentioning and worth knowing about nonetheless. In the real world, both of those drives are pretty much going to be functionally identical. Regardless of the overall capacity, generally speaking, both of them should deliver perfectly adequate performance, and it's going to be very difficult for you to, to ever notice the difference between the two. Uh, and so, in general, I would be happy to recommend either of them. The key point is that the SN750, whether it's on deal or on offer or not, is generally a slightly lower price point. And that means that it sort of, I guess, has the edge in terms of if you're planning on picking up one or the other. If they happen to both be on sale, technically speaking, especially the quietly updated version of the 970 EVO Plus might be ever so slightly better, but I think either are a very good pick, and at least for the time being, this uh, SN750 is actually probably going to be my pick for these sorts of builds. In fact, I used it in a build guide just uh, this week at the start of the week. If you want to check that out, there'll be a video in the cards above for you, or on the end cards. Uh, but at that sort of price point, it offers a pretty decent value and a significant performance improvement over the lower tier of drives like the SN550, which are the, the DRAM-less models. Uh, and so I think this is a very good spot to be in in terms of the, the price to performance balance and the just outright performance as well. It is worth mentioning that there are a couple of other drives that you may want to consider instead, such as the Samsung 980, the non-pro variant, which is a PCIe Gen 3 drive, uh, but is a slightly better performing, slightly faster, higher end one, and at least on the, the non-sale pricing, is actually very similar to the SN750. There's also the SN850 if you want to go PCIe Gen 4, admittedly spending a bit more as well. And of course, there are other options like the Sabrent Rocket line. Uh, of course, plenty of other options from Samsung as well. And actually, even the SN750 SE, which is a sort of uh, PCI Gen 4 light edition, as in it offers only marginally better performance than the SN750, but uses PCI Gen 4 to do so. So it's a, a bit of a balance if you do have a PCIe Gen 4 compatible uh, processor and motherboard, that might be an option, but it is also a fair bit more expensive for at least what looks like relatively little extra performance, so I'll, uh, I'll leave that one with you. So yeah, that's a look at the SN750. If you want to pick one up, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. In fact, I'll leave a link to both Overclock GK, who I bought this one from, and uh, Amazon. Uh, both of those will be affiliate links if you're interested in picking those up, or just checking out pricing when and when you watch this, then do feel free to take a look. 
I'd love to hear your thoughts on the SN 750 in the comments down below. Is this a drive you'd pick up yourself or would you go with something like the 970 EVO Plus instead or maybe one of the newer PCIe Gen 4 drives or one of the more budget ones like the, the DRAM, DRAM-less uh, SN 550? Feel free to let me know in those comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this one on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis, then do hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. You can also check out a whole load more videos on the end cards. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so in a load of different ways. There's the YouTube join button where you get access to our Money Men Discord chat, sponsor free videos and some cool emojis to use in the comments and on our weekly live streams or there's Patreon instead if you'd prefer and a load of other affiliate links and uh, even links to merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one and loads of other designs that I made myself if you want to check them out. Otherwise thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you on the next video.